It has been three weeks since President Biden announced that he was taking executive action to pardon thousands of people convicted of marijuana possession under federal law. It was a campaign promise, and a new Monmouth University poll shows most Americans do indeed support it. Joining me right now is our friend Ted Jenkin, the CEO of Oxygen Financial. Ted, how big is this decision by the president, do you believe? Well, good to see you, Jeff. And I, I think this is a big decision because essentially President Biden pardoned some 6,500 people who were convicted of basically simple possession between 2019 and 2021. But I think the bigger news, Jeff, that people aren't talking about is that the president had a call here to potentially reclassify marijuana as a drug. A lot of people don't know this, but it's a Schedule One drug right now, which means it's in the same category as heroin, LSD, peyote, ecstasy, and a Schedule II drug, Jeff, are ones like cocaine, fentanyl, and oxycotton. So marijuana is considered a harsher drug right now. If that gets reclassified, it will be really big stuff. So recreational marijuana use in our state is not legal, but it is in a lot of other places. I mean, it's massive right now, Jeff. Look, you have 19 states where it's recreationally legal. You have 37 states where marijuana is medically legal. And what's interesting is in all those states, right, it's legal to sell it, but from a federal level, it's still a crime. So is it really a crime when it's legal in those states? I think that's some of why it's an oxymoron or people are getting confused right now. Do you think President Biden's decision is the first step to nationally legalize cannabis? I mean, I, I don't know if it's the first step, but I will say it's, it's another big step. I think it's a foregone conclusion that marijuana will eventually be legal. The question is, how long will it take to get there? Will it happen in two years or will it happen in 12 years? But if, if you're looking at this decriminalization, that's a big step. People aren't going to get busted for simple possession. And if you're looking at reclassifying the drug, that could potentially open up the spigots for companies like PayPal and Venmo, the banking system, all to get engaged in, in marijuana. So it's, it's big business. I think you've got to believe a financial incentive for the government is at play here as well. I mean, it, there's no way that it cannot be. I mean, I could give you 31 trillion reasons, Jeff, and it starts with our federal deficit. I mean, we're $31 trillion in the hole. And when you have a state like Colorado, which last year collected almost a billion dollars in taxes, it might remind people of what happened to prohibition in the 30s, right? Eventually, alcohol became legal, and the government figured out how to collect taxes. If you basically see the handwriting on the wall, my view is, Jeff, this is headed in the same direction. We have come a, a long way in a relatively short term as far as marijuana goes. I mean, this has been bantered about since I was in grade school and in middle school and all of that. We used to have debates on it as kids uh, in, in school, but it really has taken off, I think, the last 10 years. Don't, don't you think with, with Oregon and Colorado and the way that they have implemented legalization? Yeah, I, I really do, Jeff. I mean, and look, Canada has nationalized it already. You've got pretty much every state on the West Coast that already said, yes, this is recreationally legal. And in a state like Georgia, there are, are things being sold here like Delta 8 or Delta 9, which it still begs the question, is it marijuana or is it not, Jeff? People would say no, but I think we're pushing this envelope every single day. I think it's only a matter of time before eventually this is legalized in all 50 states. Ted Jenkin, the CEO of Oxygen Financial, as always, thanks a lot, Ted. We greatly appreciate your insight. Okay. Thanks, Jeff.